here with the Beaverton School District. Today we're here making a video on how to properly chain a school bus. Remove chains from storage area. Place Legrand key, bungees, and wire in storage area so they do not get lost in the snow. For your safety, it's important to remember that while removing the bucket out of the storage compartment to use your legs and not your back. An extra bungee or a small piece of wire would be very helpful for securing the extra links of the chain. Separate chains at side of bus, away from street. Start at one end of chain and lay it out straight making sure open ends of crosslinks are up. Work from one end of the chain to the other to make sure all the outside links at crosslinks lay flat on the ground. If they don't, the chain is twisted. Hold chain at last link that lies flat. Then move towards the spots where it seems to be twisted. The chain will show you which way you need to turn to untangle it. Here's an example of what a twisted chain will look like. Here's an example of a properly straightened chain. After the chain is untangled, you are ready to hang it over the tire. Make sure when you pick up the chains that the Legrands will be on the outside of the tire. For smoother installation, lay the chains both in position on the ground for proper installation. Stand on the side of the chain with the Legrands near your feet. Pick up the chain on the side without Legrands at about the fourth and sixth cross links. Slide the chain up over the top of the tire. This should allow just enough chain to hang down in back of tire so you can tuck it under the edge of the tire and it will not slip when you back up. Always have the extra chain length at the front of the tire so you can back onto the chain and hook the chain at the front of the tire. You don't want to fight the mud flaps. For your safety, be sure to bend at the knees to pick up the chains. Hang chains on both outside duels. Tuck ends at the back of tire under the tire. Back bus approximately two feet or the width of the front passenger door. So the end of the chain clears the front of the tire by six to 10 inches. Before backing over the chains, make sure to double check for these major points. The Legrands, the link locks, and the cross chain hooks are all facing outward on the outside of the tire. Also be sure that the cross links are facing upward. These allow for traction in the ice. You can measure the distance to back up by putting a mark in the snow at the back side of the front passenger door. Then back up until the mark in the snow is at the front of the door. You could drive forward or backward over the chains depending on the situation that you're in. At the back edge of each tire, start at the ground and work the chain up and over towards the front of the tire so you get out as much slack as possible. Hook the outside chain link first before the inside to avoid the chain being knocked over the tire onto the axle. Then, relock the outside link after you finish the inside. At the front of the tire, hook the chain on the inside as tight as you can get it. If more than two loose links are left hanging, make sure you wire them up so they don't do body damage by hitting the undercarriage, taking off paint, or hitting against the tire. Hook the outside of the chain as tight as possible. Make sure the extra links are hooked away from the tire so they can't rub. Use your Legrand key to tighten as many Legrands as possible. If you get all the slack out of the chain before you're hooked up, you probably won't be able to tighten all the Legrands.
Place two to three bungees on each tire chain. To avoid damage to the bus, use the cross bungee to secure the extra links of the chain. Put one on the extra links to the opposite side of the tire and the second on perpendicular to this. Make sure you keep track of your extra wire and Legrand key. They get lost easily in the snow. For your safety, be sure to hook the bungee onto the top of the chain first, pulling downward. Pull up a few hundred feet to check the fit. You can tighten the chains if necessary. Top speed with chains on dry pavement is 20 miles per hour. Bare spots in the snow is 25 miles per hour. Packed snow is 30 miles per hour. Dry pavement at high speeds with chains on will wear the chains in half very quickly. Try to always keep the chain tires in snow or slush as much as possible. Stay away from dry pavement if possible or stop and take your chains off if all the snow is gone. Listen. If you hear any unusual clatter of chains, stop immediately. If an outside link breaks and chain wraps around inside dual, this equals road call. Very long trip, very impatient passengers. If you are going slow, stop immediately. You may be able to unwrap it from inside dual. Use extra links to repair chain and continue on trip without too much inconvenience to your passengers. If a crosslink breaks, it will hit under side of bus, which can take off paint or dent bus body. This equals body work. You should wire both sides of broken links to both chain sides so they cannot cause damage. To remove chains, unhook all bungees and loosen Legrands. Hook outside chain as loose as possible so chain cannot slide off back of tire. Then unhook inside chain and release outside chain. Do both sides of the bus, then pull bus forward off the chains. Remove chain from the top of tire. Keep both ends together so the chains do not get tangled. Shake as much snow off the chains as possible. Put chains in bucket first then Legrand key, wire, and bungees on top of the chain. Remember, bend at the knees to protect your back, then place the bucket in the storage area and secure the storage door. For proper storage, be sure to hook the chains over the buckets for easier accessibility the next time you need them. While we're talking about chaining our buses, it's also important to think about personal items that would be helpful for us while we're out in the weather. Uh, around October, while we're looking to make sure we have all our chains and everything that we need, I also start putting together a winter bag. Typically, I'll grab one of the kids' backpacks and get ready to pack it with stuff that I would need. First of all, I think about kneeling. So you could get yourself a kneeling mat or you could use a gardening, they have those little foam pads that gardeners use, that would be great. You can also just grab a garbage bag and put that in your winter bag. Anything that's gonna keep you up off the ground and keep your knees dry. Other items that are really important is an extra flashlight so that you can see while you're out there, make sure that it has batteries that are working. Uh, you'll need handy wipes, things to wipe your hands when you're done. I can't explain this too much. You'll need to stay hydrated, so make sure you have an extra bottle of water and maybe a granola bar to bring your nutrition up. You're going to expend a lot of energy out there. Other things that could be very helpful would be these rain capes that would keep the snow or the rain off of you and keep you dry while you're out. An extra pair of gloves, uh, a hat, Hand warmers are a really good idea while your fingers are going numb out there. An important item that I like to have in my winter bag is traction. Uh, you could use sand. In this case, I've chosen kitty litter. Remember that it's an absorbent, so if you're going to have that in your bag, it needs to be in an airtight container. I've actually put mine in a Ziploc baggie and then an airtight container. 
some things that you could use the traction for would be if you'd gotten yourself in a rut before you put your chains on, you could use the traction either ahead of your tire or behind it in order to get a little extra oomph out of the hole. Another area that's really important would be for the children's safety. This could be sprinkled outside of the loading door so as the children are loading and unloading they have traction as well. While we're talking about traction, here's a funny little item that I like to have in my bag if you have them. And they're, they're little traction devices that you can put on your shoes. Many times you hear on the radio cases where a bus driver has fallen before they even got to the tire. Something like this can be placed on the bottom of your shoe tread so that you can actually have traction while you're walking around in the snow around your bus. These are all really cool items to think about. You might think of something that I haven't brought up. Uh, if you needed more ideas, go to our training department and they have a list of things that you could put in your bag for winter safety. Remember, before snow and ice hit, be looking over your route for dangerous areas. Shady spots, hills, high traffic areas, bridges, and underpasses. Start looking early for areas on your route that would be safe for you to pull over and chain up. The number one mistake in winter driving is waiting too long before you chain your bus. So chain up early. It is our hope that our video will help you successfully chain your school buses in the future. Thank you very much.